Hey, I'm 600 Kogo, San Diego's news and talk station. I'm Chris Reed. This is Top Story. Under the Operation Fast and Furious conducted by the Justice Department, the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives was supposed to allow straw purchases of semi-automatic weapons to be transferred from gun shops in Arizona to Mexican drug cartels. This was supposed to be about tracing and halting cross-border arms trafficking. Now it's blown up into something that the New York Post says could be the biggest Washington scandal since Iran-Contra. I'm pleased to be joined now by North County Congressman Daryl Issa, the Republican who is in the middle of all this. Congressman Issa, it just seems like the more this proceeds, the more fresh questions there are about how much the Obama administration knew and how much they are still hiding. At this point, what are your biggest concerns uh, coming out of your investigation? Well, Chris, as you can imagine, the, uh, most scandals, it's not about the, the wrongdoing, it's about the cover-up. And this is an example where, sequentially, the administration has tried to first throw the ATF agents locally in Phoenix under the bus. Then they switch to the U.S. attorney, then to the head of ATF. And as we continue to pull back the layers of this, what we find is the directions and the idea, as bad as it was, really began at the top. And unlike what the administration would have you believe, there was no way for this to come out right based on the parameters that were set. This is not a failure to do a good idea. This is a bad idea that no matter how it was done was going to lead to the death at least of people in Mexico. And as you know, people in America have died, uh, including Border Patrol agent Brian Terry, directly as a result of these weapons. Now, the extraordinary uh, finding that's come out in recent days that has direct overtones of Iran-Contra is the fact that other federal money might have gone to support this Justice Department operation. Of course, in Iran-Contra, arms were sold uh, to, uh, to, to terrorists and then used to fund the Contras. I'm not saying there's a, com- a precise analogy here, but the idea that we might have uh, money coming in in improper ways to, to fund this program seems rather odd. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, Chris, you have everything, including your stimulus money, the the now famous uh, we're going to create jobs in America, created at least $10 million that went into uh, the overall gun runner program. Uh, Again, an abuse of what was intended. But more importantly, what we have here, sadly, is you have a a program where they, they did have DEA, CIA, FBI, uh, the State Department at one point, uh, certainly alcohol, tobacco, and fire, and the FBI, and others. And they were not communicating just the opposite. Each was, each was communicating to the Department of Justice, but they were keeping secrets from each other. I'll give you an example quickly. Alcohol, tobacco, and fire agents in Mexico City, this is where the guns in many cases were ending up and people were dying. If they discovered one of these weapons that they knew nothing about, they typed in the serial number. They got a false statement of a network error. They, the software had been modified, so in the case of these serial numbers, they didn't even get alerted to call agent so-and-so, their colleague, in Phoenix so that this information could be passed on. Obviously, you can't trace weapons when you're covering it up from the people who are supposed to help you. This is Top Story on AM 600 Kogo, San Diego's news and talk station. I'm Chris Reed. We're talking with Vista Congressman Daryl Issa, who's the head of the House Government and Oversight uh, Committee, Government Reform and Oversight Committee, that's looking into Operation Fast and Furious. Now, it's being reported today that uh, that you and uh, Senator Grassley are seeking a broad range of documents from the highest levels of the Justice Department to try to get a sense of who knew what and when. Do you have a sense of how this is going to end? Do you expect to see stonewalling or claims of executive privilege, or do you have some expectation that the documents will be produced fairly quickly? Well, I think we always have expectations that sooner or later we'll get cooperation, because historically, uh, in this kind of a scandal, uh, the the cover-up ends. It unravels because the public demands that kind of uh, of outcome. Uh, we're In my committee, and and Senator Grassley's been very uh, supportive and cooperative, our committee has a rule, which is we go where the facts lead us. We don't make an assumption, because we could have made an assumption that these were rogue ATF agents or a U.S. attorney trying to get a reputation on the backs of a bad program. We could have done a lot of things earlier. So what we do is we just keep plodding along, and we report what we see when we see it, and some will jump to conclusions. Our, Our view is that Whatever the conclusion is, it won't be the final result when we get done with our investigation. 
We're talking with Congressman Darrell Issa about his investigation of Operation Fast and Furious. Now, I was struck by the Washington Post profile of you that appeared in the last couple of days in that uh, you don't see Democrats saying Operation Fast and Furious is, uh, is a partisan witch hunt, or you don't see some of the shrill reaction that has accompanied some of your other investigations. Are you getting bipartisan support from your committee members on this? Do they acknowledge that there's real issues here? Well, the Justice Department has acknowledged that these issues are real and that the uh, uh, the requirement is real, and that, that's been helpful. We haven't yet gotten the kind of buy-in we'd like to get by the uh, the other the minority on the committee, perhaps mostly because their message has been, well, this wouldn't be necessary if we just took away guns, if we just had assault weapon bans and so on. And that may be politically important in their districts. I don't want to mix that question, uh, which I have my view on like they do, um, I don't want to mix that with the legitimate oversight that we have to do into this tragic series of events and mistakes. So it ta- eventually we hope that they will come in, they will sign on to our final conclusions once we've finished our investigation. And I will say, Chris, it is getting better. The Washington Post, the New York Times, uh, the San Diego Union Tribune and others, they're looking at this objectively have has helped to get better cooperation from the administration and at least less uh, interference uh, from the minority. I've been in the minority. I, your first reaction is to try to say whatever the guy does, I'll do the opposite. But in time, you have to realize you do what's right, especially when your job is oversight of the other branch. We're talking with Congressman Darrell Issa about the fiasco that is Operation Fast and Furious, a Justice Department sting in which uh, hundreds, thousands of weapons ended up in the hands of Mexican drug cartels, leading to untold carnage and the death of at least one Border Patrol agent. Now, Congressman, there has been suggestions in at least one or two of the articles I've read that Operation Fast and Furious might not have been motivated as much by the desire to try to establish a, a database on cartels and what they're doing with guns as a desire to embarrass the, the U.S. gun makers who allegedly contribute 90 percent of the weapons that are used in Mexico. I figure that's much in dispute. Uh, we only have about a minute and a half. I know you don't have much time. Uh, do you think that there's meat to this allegation, or at this point is that just an allegation? Well, I certainly think that uh, that some people may have had bad motives uh, in supporting this. One thing that, I, that your listeners should know is that the, the weapon of choice was a Roma- Romanian-made AK-47. It did pass through the United States. But if they hadn't gotten it in the U.S., they undoubtedly would have been able to buy it anywhere in the world. So I think we have to look and say, what is the weapon they want and where did they get it? In this case, the weapon they wanted, we facilitated with taxpayer dollars and taxpayer support, the worst of the worst getting it, leading to thousands of deaths potentially in Mexico. Okay, thank you very much for coming on, Congressman. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Look forward to having me back, if you will. Absolutely. That's Congressman Darrell Issa, a Republican from Vista. Now, what...